What up, what up? If you're on IG, if you're on IG, what up? Um, my YouTube subscribers, I'm gonna, cause I'm also gonna put this up on YouTube. Uh, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm gonna have a very special guest on in a bit. What's up, Ray? Let's see. Uh, sent, there you go. Waiting for Ray. <laughs> hey, man. What up? We got it. Hey, what's going on, brother? How you doing tonight? Doing great, man. All right, so we live right now. Awesome sauce. All so right, what's man. good, man? You talk to me. Talk to me. What's going on? Well, first of all, how you been? Man, I've been good. I've been working on, um, you know, building my real estate portfolio. I've been working on uh, mentorships. I've been working on consulting. Uh, you know, I got a, got a couple of uh, projects getting lined up so that way we can uh, do some remodels. So I got a, awesome. That's I got great. A lot That's of great. Going on, dude. <laughs> I, I bet, man. You're you're always staying busy. You're always grinding. Um, for so for the people on IG right now, and then uh, I'm also going to post this on my YouTube channel. So if you're on YouTube, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Um, this here is uh, Raymond Gonzalez. He's actually um, the very first mentor that I've had when it came to real estate. And, uh, I mean, he's, he's, uh, I've kept, I kept in contact with him for, for many years now. And, uh, yeah, man, you, you've taught me a lot so far throughout the years. And, and uh, again, I'm happy that you're on, the, you're on my podcast and blessing me with your time, man. Oh, absolutely, man. I appreciate the invite. And it's always been a, it's always been mutual working with you. You know, I think we've learned a lot from each other over the years, which is a good thing, you know, and uh, I think that's one of the points to entrepreneurship and freedom is, is to be able to, to network and, and to exchange information with the right people. Uh, because you, you, you never know that one instance can change your whole trajectory on life. Most definitely. It's just meeting that, that one person that, that changes or tweaks something within the, your, your mental. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. It just takes uh, that one thought or that one person to change your paradigm. So most definitely, I agree with you. Um, so so uh, let's do like a quick little backstory, you know, like a quick intro just to kind of introduce, your, introduce yourself. And I know you mentioned your projects and everything that you're doing right now. But um, what let's say um, at what age did you discover, um, you know, you had a particular mindset on how you viewed uh, certain things? Wow. Um, you know, I feel like that question is, when did you decide to become an entrepreneur? <laughs> you know, I, I, I feel uh, I started, I always had the entrepreneurial spirit in me, uh, okay. you know, even like from what I've been told, my, my grandfather passed when I was a younger man. And I was always told that he was like, the original like house flipper of the family, like buying houses back in the sixties for like five to ten thousand dollars and turning around and owner financing them out to people. Wow. I mean, and you know, you're talking about strategies getting done, you know, in the sixties, bro. Like that's that's pretty amazing. That, so that's impressive, yep. My my father uh owned his own business too. You know, he ran a a, a successful business for close to forty years. You wow. know, and and you know I've been I've been an entrepreneur. I think I got started in music when I was about mm -hmm. eighteen. Mm -hmm. So eighteen was when I caught that entrepreneurial bug that you know I wanted to learn a craft and 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 figure out the business side of it. And mm -hmm. you know, fast forward years and years later, it like that that transcended right into real estate. I mean, yeah. the, it was it was almost. Uh, Cause it was it was kind of the same the can the same concept the, thing. the the product the product and you know getting the your clientele and building a brand and marketing and all that is kind of the same thing. Yeah, you know, it's just rinse repeat. So, you know, and my my dad, you know, he played a pretty big influence on me. But it, 
no one no one actually teaches you or at least not to me they didn't mm -hmm. they didn't nobody taught me entrepreneurship you know what i mean like it, it i just saw like my dad didn't sit down and teach me about business i wish he would have you know what i mean mm -hmm. but but he didn't he didn't ever like sit down and say here son like this is how you do this this is how you do that i just saw my dad work i just saw him he was always hustling he was always yeah. running the business just doing it you know so that was like my education like it, you know mm -hmm. we didn't get into details on how you know things happened and it and it it, it came to be you know him, yeah, but, him but, that but he, he gave me he gave me that work ethic for sure yeah, same thing uh, that's that's the same thing i got from my pops you know um yeah, like hey where are you at dad oh yeah working you, again you, you're working <laughs> yeah exactly yeah um most definitely so that that's that's a big that's a big thing right there so if anything, you were naturally, naturally, you say you were naturally like that, and you just started to kind of educate. What did you get more education through books, or did you find yourself mentors other than your pops, or oh, you, you for know, sure, man, like so the way the way that I learn, the way that I figured out how I learned mm -hmm. was I have to do things and then really suck at them, and then mm -hmm. I decide like I totally know I don't want to do that. Okay. You know, like it was it was early on when I was like a kid, like 19, uh, you know, 20, 21. My brother and my cousin went to go work at a, a factory, you know, uh, doing mm -hmm. soap at they were they would pack soap, pack soap, you know. So, you know, I was this, I was this young kid. I was I was in between uh, jobs at the time. Right. And and they're like, you want to come work over here? We're like, well, all three be working over there and it'll be fun. And I'm like, hell yeah. They're like, yeah, I'll give it a shot. I go over there and like I work six months in this soap factory and and it was such a. A life changing event, really, that happened be because, because in that six months, <laughs> I realized. <laughs> exactly how bad I hated factory work <laughs> like I was like this is the worst like you know like if I had to compare it to like you know shoveling manure <laughs> you okay, know like, shit. <laughs> it, 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 it's pretty bad you know so yeah okay I learned quick I didn't want to do that kind of stuff and then I went to go work on an 18 wheeler with another buddy of mine, we would unpack 18 wheelers at, and we'd get there like at three o'clock in the morning and we'd probably get off like at you know, 11 o'clock in, in the, in the morning, you know, mm -hmm. and that's all we were doing for those hours, just unpacking 18 wheelers. And I did that. I lasted there for like a month, bro. <laughs> like it was, it was, it was a, like, I, I bet it was hell though that whole month, huh? <laughs> it was like it was a month. It was grueling, man. It was really grueling. So, like, super props to people that unload eighteen wheelers, man. Like y'all, <laughs> hard, hard, hard labor in general, right? Oh hell yeah, dude, hell yeah. And and so, you know, I went I went uh, to go to work at a, a job on the telephone, dude. And and they're like, you know, this is like pencil pusher, office clerical type work and I, I didn't know I didn't know nothing about it man oh man I don't know what I'm doing here oh sorry I didn't know nothing about it can you see me okay because it looks dark over here or my um, you you had the lighting was pretty good I don't, I don't know what you push at, right yeah. now I mean I can still see you there's some kind of filter I just hit my bad so anyways <laughs> um no but I can still see you though all right cool man so anyways yeah I was talking about uh unloading the 18 wheelers and I realized mm -hmm. how bad I hated the 18 wheelers too. And then I ended up getting a job as a, 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 a clerk, like a, on a telephone. And, uh, you know, it was, at, I, at, I was, at, that, at, at that same company, it was, yeah, well, it was a different company. It was, it was similar to what people now call West communications or whatever. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Okay. I was just sitting on the phone all day, like just taking orders, man. And I was like, God, this job really sucks too, man. Sucks too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> this job sucks, man. But yeah. but it ain't that bad, you know. Like yeah, it, it was it was just it was just part of your process, paying your dues and yeah, just, yeah. Trying, just trying to figure shit out. It wasn't it wasn't that bad. And then at the time, I was also like, you know, uh, I was about like two three years into music making, you mm -hmm. know. So I would I would do full time music, 
and then like part-time dog shit job you okay. know like full-time music like learning the business learning uh, you know, recording, learning engineering, uh, mm. getting artists together, marketing product, you know, uh, mm. artist development, all of that stuff, you know. Okay. I did that for like, man, like 13 years. Okay. okay? And so and I, on and off or you were doing it consistently? consistently. Uh, like like, well, like jobs and the music and. It, it was never, the problem, the problem that I learned there too is that it was never, consistently even though even though i was doing music full-time i still had a part-time job you okay. know and that part-time job uh you know in the in when you look at it in hindsight really it, it took away from more time and process oh, that i could have give, given okay. to, to the crowd to the music know? oh yeah of course right but music wasn't paying the bills you know mm -hmm. and and at a certain point i was like man i love music but I was up one night late and I saw this dude talking shit on, on, a on, you know, late night infomercial, like learn real estate and, you know, you could, you could become a millionaire and blah, 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 and all kinds of other bull. So I knew that the guy on the TV was full of crap and, and I, I, I knew I didn't want to learn from him, but mm -hmm. I, I knew that there was something in real estate because I knew like, you know, my grandpa had done it, uh, mm -hmm. So, like, I already had been in the music business long enough to understand things about business, like mm -hmm. limited liability companies, you know. So, EIS so, so you knew there was some type of uh, potential there, like that you could have possibly uh, discovered that, you know, maybe real estate could be your, your lane, right? Right. And and, and, and the, the thing that happened was, was I, I started learning about this thing called wholesaling, right? Now, mm -hmm. we're, we're at about 2012 right now. So okay. I started learning about about this thing wholesaling, right? And and maybe it was just because I was new at the time, but it, mm -hmm. a lot of people didn't really talk about it. Yeah, it wasn't a, a trend like it is a, now. A lot right? of people, a lot of people didn't really talk about it. There was, I mean, don't get me wrong. There was people in the game for sure. There's players, but yeah. it wasn't. It wasn't like it is nowadays where, I mean, there's just, there's just a, so much information out there and you can literally mm -hmm. learn, you know, everything that you need to learn online basically for free if you take the time to decipher all of the exactly. information that you're getting mm -hmm. from YouTube and other, other media sources. Um, but so back in 2012, I started learning and there are some videos out there and I started following a, a few cats on YouTube and, and just started, uh, you know, tinkering with the idea while I would, I would go to work and and fast forward uh, I started working at USAA which was a uh, mm -hmm. you know taking it old school back from when I was a kid on the phone taking orders and you know I, I got a, uh, an insurance license and became an insurance agent um, you know for about four or five years and I worked for that mm -hmm. company USA is great hated it hated the job hated yeah. being there <laughs> like you understand the trend you know yeah. and, 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 you know, after being at USA for a while, I was slowly but surely learning about real estate. And, uh, you know, eventually I got a license. And, uh -huh. and uh, you know, once I got the license, I got your your, your your real estate license is what you're talking about. My right? real estate license, yeah. I got a real estate license, man. And this and, was back and, in and, and what made you uh, take that, that, that step, that jump from having a secure job? Because I, let, let, I want to kind of dissect and get into, into that mindset at that time that you were making that choice. Because I, I assume you you already had your you know your family and you had bills and you had a lot of shit going on, correct? Sure. So absolutely. so what? Because I'm sure you had some type of doubt, fear, but then you also had some type of motivation and and uh, um you you know you were you were looking forward to doing something different. Sure. Yeah. I mean, so yes to everything you said. There is definitely uh, there is definitely apprehension. Uh, and and some fear at at the beginning at certain parts because you got to understand I already had been in music for so long mm -hmm. that that a lot of that is entrepreneurship at its core and and you know there there came a certain point where I I did a deal I I did like my first couple of wholesale deals I did make a lot of money it was it was they 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 weren't very big. But, mm. but the proof of concept was there that I could do it. And, and you know, I think what happened was, with me was I, I stayed working at the nine-to-five job 
while I was learning real estate. And that whole mm -hmm. process took about a year, okay. a year of staying somewhere that I know I didn't want to be, but I knew was paying the bills while I was absorbing this content and learning this information and chewing on it and mauling it over, you know, and then it, it got to the point where, uh, you know, I was working full time there at the, at the, at the company. And then I, I cut it back. So let, let's just go part time. And then I cut part time to let me just work weekends. And then okay. I cut weekends to let me just put my two weeks in, you know, oh, yep. and then, and you know, so it was gradual. Like I, I slowly but surely became acclimated to okay. the real estate world uh, you know, because, I, you know, you, you talk about fear and apprehension and all that, but, but really, if you, if you plan it, it was, it was all premeditated, you know, it was, yeah, it was all strategic. It was all strategic. It was premeditated. You know, I, I yeah. thought about it and I was like, look, a year from now, like, you know, I'm going to be doing real estate deals, you know? And, and so, so, you know, I, I learn, I, I get a license and, and, um, I go work for a wholesale brokerage, right? Now mm -hmm. I'm a fresh, a fresh rookie. Don't know Jack. Um, mm -hmm. Before I got my real estate license and before I went to go work for this brokerage, I actually did get a mentor. Um, you know, and he didn't, he didn't teach me much about real estate, but he seemed to know what he was doing. Mm -hmm. So you know, I, I, I wanted to, you know, just be able to pick his brain, this and that, you know. So I gave mm -hmm. him a little money and I hung out with him for a while, and you know. Still friends to this day. Still tell him what's up every once in a while when I see him. Yeah, yeah. Good dude. Um, but going, so I took my cousin's advice. I, I flew out to Los Angeles when I was learning the game, talked to him. He, he mentored me out there for, you know, five or six days, showed me L.A., showed me the flips he was doing out there. It's pretty badass. Tells me, look, if you want to do this, you want to be around people that are doing this so that way you can learn, go back to Texas, go do your thing and and you know start start picking it up and i already knew like i already had knew to do that it was just confirmation there was just all this confirmation right there that said dude like i know i'm doing the right things like i'm in the it it, it it's like i'm with nature you know what i mean yeah. so fast forward i i got the license i'm in the brokerage um wholesaling real estate was fucking hard man you know and a lot of people talk about it and you know hey mm -hmm. You contract something for fifty, you turn around and sell it for sixty. No yeah, they they, they they make it they make it sound easy, look easy, but they don't <laughs> they they don't speak about or people don't understand how how because I know because you yeah. you you were mentoring me on a day to day <laughs> basis, you coached me the whole way, the hours and hours and hours and hours and the cold calling and following up and it it yeah. they, people people don't Tax understand all that. Yeah, definitely, it's taxing, you know. So. Um, just just being able to to process that and mm -hmm. and being willing to you know wait six months for your first sale mm -hmm. you know be being able to to have humble pie you know and yeah. and and learn and keep learning and keep learning all all in your cara that humble pie <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> and and so so um you know i i i get a couple of deals under my belt and then and then I start picking up a little steam, you know. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. picking up a little steam. Like, oh, I I think I got this this wholesaling thing figured out, man. I ended up starting to train some of the guys that I was working with, that some of the new guys that came on. I would kind of you know show them the ropes and mentor them a little bit, this, that, and the other. It was all good. And then I I felt something. It was the same thing that I felt when I was getting ready to leave the. Uh, and this is what I'm telling people is how you know when you're ready. I felt I felt something like um, when I was a kid and I was getting ready to leave the soap factory, or I was a kid and I was getting ready to leave the uh, the the 18 wheeler unloading dock. And I was getting ready to split on them. You know, I got that feeling. You were getting that same feeling. I was getting that same feeling that I got when I was getting ready to leave USAA and I was like, Oh, here's my two weeks. Like, Hey, I'm only going to work Saturday. Hey, I'm not coming in tomorrow. Like, you know, yeah. I, I got, I got that feeling. And, and that's when, you know, I, I, I left the brokerage and just went totally on my own. Yeah. I, I was totally, totally solo. And I jumped right into a flip, you know? Uh, so mm -hmm. going, going straight from wholesaling and wholesaling is really, um, 
it's a lot of theory, really. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. there's things that you can enact, you know, your marketing and, and you're, you're, you're pushing, uh, you know, your, your, your sales as far as trying to find dispositions for the properties and stuff. Mm -hmm. but, but rehabbing a property and wholesaling a property are two different things. You know, exactly. they're, they're, mm -hmm. they're two different games, you know. So I did that on purpose because I already had learned the, the wholesale part of real estate. I'm like, okay. okay. I know how to do this part of the game. Check, you know. Let me put that tool in my tool belt. Yeah, you know and how to obtain. You you know how to get the property already. Right, right. So mm -hmm. I, I I learned that part, and I know how to turn around and sell it if I need to sell it. You know. Okay. Mm -hmm. I I learned that part of the business. Okay. So flip next. Let's work on figuring out how to re remodel the property. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let me do a couple of joint ventures with people that are that are remodeling properties learn some things from them. Maybe I'll help them list the property because I'm an agent, right? Of course. Well, yep. at that, let me learn how to list some properties too. Mm -hmm. Boom. So now I know how to wholesale. I know how to list properties. I know how to offer on properties. And now I'm learning how to remodel properties, you know, just nah, like nope. kind of this, this whole, this fluid, it just goes step after step, you know? And, and um, I got to the point to where, okay, I know how to do these certain things. Let me put a little team together. You know, mm -hmm. now I got people over here doing this part of the business. I got people over here doing this part of the business. And that's how I ended up where I am now, where I have different moving components of the business and, and business partners and associates that I'm working with to help fulfill each part of, of the business. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Oh, well, yeah, most definitely. And so when through that whole process, because um, I know you had – what what we called the the bat line, yeah. You had you know we we you had a whole a whole team together, you know, and talk about that that process of how it, how hard how hard it is or how how what the what the process is of finding individuals that are either as motivated as you or willing to learn and and be consistent with it. That way you can not like you said not just work. I want to work on my business, not in my business. Correct. I remember you. I remember you telling me that. Correct. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things I can say for sure, without a doubt, and what I learned quickly after leaving the the, the wholesale brokerage I was working at, is don't don't try to build a team um, that you're not ready to handle yet. Even though you're a mentor, even though you're a leader, even though you're a trainer, it doesn't it doesn't mean that you're ready for a team yet. You know, um, if you can't lead them, no, I'm sorry, let me I messed that up. If you can't feed them, you can't lead them. Okay. You know, if you don't if you don't have the lead generation part of the wholesale business down, don't try to build a team and and try to, you know, give them give them leads that that they're not going to you know, uh, that they're all going to, they're all going to fight for so much and be in competition for it so much mm -hmm. because they're so limited. Like, you know, we have five people on the team. we got three leads. Like, you know, that, yeah. that, that's tough. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, granted, you know, you learn you, you, and, and you, you rebuild and you, you redirect and you regroup and, and, you know, th so that's one thing, you know, if you can't, if you can't, uh, feed them, you know, don't try to lead them. Yeah. But what what I what I've done over the years is I've I've actually given so much of my time and knowledge mm -hmm. to people, and this For is free. this is like <laughs> this, <laughs> this is like my little like like I was doing this shit before it was cool, right? Like you know, mm -hmm. like Gary Vee says, you know, like it it, it was a. Uh, all of the the different people, whether I charged them or I did it for free, either or, mm -hmm. uh, made such an impact on their life, made such mm -hmm. an impact on their trajectories, right? And mm -hmm. in turn, they had a re such an impact on mine too. And and over over all the years of me learning and growing and me passing the info on to the folks around me who who want it, uh, you know, I I ended up just building a a really loyal network of people around mm -hmm. me that I call friends and business associates. And when, when it becomes like that and it becomes less like, Oh, let me 
find the right people and let me hire on people. Mm -hmm. And it, when it's more organic, like the way that, that my team grew, it, it, uh, it makes it easier to work with them because they understand, they have their expectations. They already know what it's like to work with me and for me for free. And exactly. make, they already know what they're getting with me. It's not like, you know, it's not like they're, they're, they're being, you know, tricked, like, you know, yeah. this one thing and then it's another thing. No, that, that's what it is. And, and, and that's a very, that's a very important thing. Definitely. Because I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, no, I was just, uh, I was just going to say that no matter, no matter how many people you can, you can get and have them, you know, say this is proprietary information and have them sign documents talking about they're not going to, you know, be able to do their business after the fact. Mm -hmm. I, I never believed in that. I always mm -hmm. thought that, you know, one day there's going to be a time for us to do business. Like once I teach you what you need and, and you see some success with it in one way, shape or form, like it's going to be you know, paid forward. You're going to come back. You're going to want to mm -hmm. keep doing business. You know exactly. what I'm saying? And finding the people that are motivated to, to do that, man, like sometimes they'll just pop into your life. Most of the time they just pop into my life, man. I don't, I don't really look for them. They just, they just like, come. Like me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, like. Because <laughs> I, 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 found, I found your ad on Craigslist. Yeah, and that's a very very tough thing because it, 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 especially in this business, there's a bunch of like schemy people, a bunch of snakes, man, a bunch of yeah. frauds, and and you were very genuine, no BS, no sugarcoat. I I hit you up, and I and my my uh my pitch was, I don't know nothing about real estate. I've been watching YouTube. I I am just looking for a mentor. I just want someone to teach me. And right. you you set it up like no no questions asked no nothing, and I was there within I think the next day or within within that week, yeah. And we we sat down. It was a uh, you know me 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 and my wife, and you were just chopping game with me, and you were kind of like seeing we're getting a feel for you know of who I was and kind of where where my mind was at. And throughout the years, we've always kept in touch, you know and. That 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 right there, I I appreciate it because not only have you motivated me, but you've also also uh, are a big part of developing my mindset and and my drive when it comes to I know my my I wouldn't say end goal, but what my main goal is to invest in real estate, whether it's wholesaling, flipping, whether it's a buy buy and hold, uh, because you told me you know you can get not it's not just about getting rich or about getting wealthy but you know you can build that generational wealth and you know you're going to have that stability and 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 the only the only difference is is it's information it's information right. that it's information that individuals do not have that you know that you just got to put put in the effort put in the work to to learn you know and then you'll, you'll start seeing the results that you want Right. And, and so here's the thing, right? Why people come to me and ask like, Hey, can you show me how to do this and this and that, you know, like I, I am, <laughs> and I say it, like I said it before, I am not like some guru dude, you know, who just knows everything that there is to know about real estate or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Not, not by the stretch, man. Like I, I am constantly learning and fucking up in real estate on the daily, like, I, that's how I learn. Like, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, obviously nobody tries to go out and bomb and just totally, you know, mess something up. Yeah, of course. But, but like, you know, in, in real estate, as well as in business in general, man, it's chess. And, and sometimes, you know, you got to pivot and move when you got to pivot and move. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, then, you know, you start talking about woulda, coulda, shoulda, and, mm -hmm. and you shouldn't, you should, you should, you know, in chess, you know, know your opponent, right? Know who you're playing, you know, and, and once you start um, playing that same person over and over again, you get to understand your opponent, mm -hmm. right? So when you, when you play chess you, and, uh, or, or any really competitive sport where you're, you yeah, know, of course, against, against another, fucking, like my, my, the boxing, like you're yeah. in there, it's, yeah. you know, you exactly. know, it's life or, life or death. And, and it's, 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 it's exactly like chess, like Mayweather said, you know, 
Um, but yeah, I, I agree with you 100. percent So you start uh, you start playing chess with this mm-hmm. with this opponent, right? And over time, you learn them, and they learn you. And really, mm-hmm. that's how you elevate and make each other better. You know, in in, in doing real estate. Like I said, in real estate and in business, that's that's really what I've learned, man. That's that's awesome. That's that's awesome. So okay, so where do you where do you see yourself, or, or what, what do you feel about the current market? Let let me ask you that. What like twenty twenty with this whole pandemic thing, coronavirus and everything, it's affected not just real estate but many of businesses, and uh, a lot of people are unemployed right now. Uh, unemployment rate is has skyrocketed. But but what are your thoughts on that? Sure, man. You know, like I can, I'll give you my thoughts uh, on a on a personal tip. You okay. know how how the the pandemic has affected uh, myself and my business personally. You know, mm-hmm. and and then I can give you a little perspective. We can come back to it about how mm-hmm. the market is doing. You know, okay. so so back back when this thing started, I was. Uh, I was working on a, a property that I just bought. Mm-hmm. It was badass, dude. It was it was in a good t- uh, part of town. Um, you know, it was a, a duplex. It was already separately metered. I mean, it was it was legit, man. And I got it for a, a damn steal of a deal. And I'll it bet. was gonna, <laughs> it was going to be worth buku dollars mm-hmm. uh, after I fixed it. You know, and and um, so the plan. And and again, this is all pre-pandemic, you know. So the the plan <laughs> is to buy it, fix it up a little bit, make it decent, you know, and then turn it into an Airbnb okay. and just rent it out and just boom, just rent it out and just collect, collect, collect mm-hmm. while while I'm doing it, uh, while I'm while I'm you know letting the equity build in the property, mm-hmm. and um, so I buy it. I'm in a hard money loan on it. Um, I'm, I'm also knee deep in the middle of another rehab mm-hmm. and, and, and I got, I'm firing on all cylinders, man. I got wholesale deals coming in the pipeline. I've got mm-hmm. a rehab going on. I got this Airbnb thing that I'm working on, you know, it's legit. Like, you know, it, it, it was, it was, I was, I was shucking and jiving and moving and grooving for sure. Mm-hmm. And then, and then the, the reality of the pandemic kicked in. You okay. Know? The, you know, the the lenders freeze up. Hey, we're on pause right now. You okay. Know, a lot. So of that things. so that causes you to be on pause. Well, that's the thing, man. Like when you're an entrepreneur, when you pause, you die, right? So yeah. So you really can't pause, right? But so you, so you but, had to had to adjust and adapt. What What are you gonna do next? Like, what's your next What's your next test move? Exactly, it's chess. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying is like. You get to learn your opponent, right? When and that's what I was doing, learning real estate, learning the moves, learning this and that, and then boom, new opponent, pandemic. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. <laughs> this is this is some shit right here, right? Yep. So so you know it causes me to do to do things that I wasn't expecting on doing. You know, for one, I was living in a house, and and it had it, it was in need of repairs, man. You know. But I lived in the house for a while, and it wasn't horrible. But it needed some repairs. And I was working on a flip at the same time. And I was almost done remodeling it. And I said, you know what? Be smart. Like, if I move out of this house and I sell it as an investment property, mm-hmm. because I know it needs some work, and then I'll have a little money and I can pay off some of the debts that are going on right now because of all the, the shit that's going on right mm-hmm. now, right? Yeah. And then... And then uh, I'll move into the flip and I'll refinance it. Boom, that's a chess move. Okay. The, the Airbnb, you know, the thing that I, it was gonna it was gonna be making me like five grand a month, you know, okay. in, in Airbnb field, fear, Just, uh, uh, fees and stuff, you know. Uh huh. And and uh, I, I I sold that property too, you know. Okay. I sold that property. Well, pre pre pandemic or there post when it post pandemic. Okay. Sold it. You let them go, you know, and 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 I and I slimmed down mm-hmm. because because right now with everything that's going on, I feel like the next thing to do is going to be to start 
buying these properties. Now, mm -hmm. selling these other properties put me in a position to where I'm going to be stable during the pandemic mm -hmm. and, and, and set me up for, okay, now I'm ready to buy something. You know okay. what I mean? I've got, I've got all these things in check and, and the money is balance, balancing as good as it mm -hmm. can right now, right? So yeah. now I'm ready, I'm ready to go and to go uh, be in buy mode. So what I think about the current market mm -hmm. is, is, you know, the pandemic uh, caused a lot of people to pivot just like me. Where they were, they were, you know, their outlook a few months ago, I was thinking about a buy and hold Airbnb, you know, now, you know, and that was going to be my strategy. I was going to keep buying them and keep making them into Airbnbs and all that good stuff. But now that the pandemic's hit, you know, I have a whole new strategy. I'm still going to be buying and holding. I'm just switching up the game, you know, okay. and now I'm going to be focusing more on long term renters, you know, mm -hmm. and, and there's other strategies that I'm going to implement within that game. But ultimately, mm -hmm. Right now, for me, if I can be buying one and, and, and holding one mm -hmm. and buying one and selling one, mm -hmm. I'm going to do that. Okay. You know? and, and what the things that have helped me, uh, you know, go through this thing and, and do this is, is learning business, learning how to build a business, learning how to create an entity, learning mm -hmm. – how to build business credit, learning how to get lines of credit, learning how to, you know, be pivotal. Pi so pivotal. it's all it's it's all preparation right now is what you're doing. Preparation, preparation, sharp, sharpening the, you know, the, the sword and, and ma making sure that you're it's, it's all training right now. Boom, yeah. boom, boom. And then, and then once you're ready, you're going to hit it hard again. Yeah. Uh, again, <laughs> it, 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 it's typical. It, 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 it goes in cycles, you know, it yeah. goes in cycles. Like there, there's times when you're in the real estate game and you're, you're hitting all boom, 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 boom. And you're well, that, that's the life of a business of entrepreneur ups and downs, yeah. ups and downs, ups and downs. Yeah. You know I mean? And then that's what, <laughs> and that, that's what people don't understand as well. That's why most people just, um, they settle for a nine to five or they settle for a steady paycheck. They settle for, good benefits which is there there's nothing wrong with that it's honorable but for people that are unhappy and depressed and and you know they're they're wanting to do better uh what do you feel that should you know do you, the same way you had that feeling because you had that consistent feeling of you know what it's time for me to make a move like what what would you what's what's your advice to them uh, especially they again they lost their job they're probably not if if they're getting unemployment checks or not. What do you feel? Uh, you know, what's your best advice that you can give them of moving forward yeah. through all this? Like, hey, you know what? There's there's just just be patient with with the the environment that's the current state of this country. You mm -hmm. know, it it gets better. Things things are gonna get better. It you know things might get crappier before they get better but mm -hmm. but things will eventually get better and you know for the people out there that are struggling um that are having a hard time you know and you add a nine to five that feeling that you have right there is the feeling that an entrepreneur constantly feels and that's something to think about man you know the like the, the funny thing is that the, the pandemic changed a lot of things for a lot of people and it made people move in different directions. But, you know, being in the situation that we're in now where everybody has to stay home and nobody's sure about the next check and nobody's sure where the next dollar is going to come from or what's going to happen next or the unpredictability of, of the markets and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I can go on and go on. Mm -hmm is that that is like the life of of an entrepreneur that that is the life of a, of a business person and and for the entrepreneurs out there you know just remember we're we're the strong ones we're the strong people we are the backbone of america we are the backbone of this country we are you know? and mm -hmm. and and so you know just keep moving don't don't pause don't blame other people for your shit. Don't blame the government for your shit. Don't do that. You keep moving. You keep going. It doesn't matter. Shit happens. Shit's gonna happen. You know? Nothing's for sure. Nothing's secure. You know? 
uh, they they say, oh well, you know, I've I've got a secure job. Well, can you get fired? Yeah. Okay. Well, then your job's not secure. You mm -hmm. know, and that's that's <laughs> the facts. When you own your own business, that, man, that, you can't you can't be fired. Yep. You know, but you also have to provide a product or service that the market wants because that's the beauty of capitalism is you sink or swim based on the talents to produce our service. You know, mm -hmm. if you, if you have a talent for sales, you have a talent for, you know, um, being an influencer, being, being whatever, and you can utilize that talent by all means, go ahead and Do the market going to decide if you're good or not good enough yep yeah you know the market's going to decide that the market decides if i stay in business buying real estate the market decides if you stay in business washing uh, and detailing uh you know people's whips you yep. know what i'm saying but after all these years in the the real estate game and for you after all these years in the in the detail game you mm -hmm. know the market speaks right? oh definitely the market oh, speaks. Yep. Market saying, "Hey, man, you, you know you're 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 holding your weight in water." So there you go. Yeah, I, I didn't find out how essential I was till this whole shit hit. Honestly, <laughs> I was, it, like it's been fucking crazy. Like it's it's been a big blessing for me. Uh, these past, um, what 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 are we hitting already? Five five months. Yeah, something um, like that. Um, I've probably been more busy these these past few months than I was my last quarter of last year with the detailing. You know, but that that's also it goes back to preparation and a consistent grind and building a brand and customer service and making sure you over deliver and you make sure, you know, you, you provide a, a quality service, you know, and, and that's not just with mobile detailing and real estate. That's what anything that you're trying to do, you know, and, and uh, it's it, it definitely has been a blessing, man, like most definitely. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. You know, I, I remember uh, particular times when when um, you were you were trying to make a transition between what you're doing and going into real estate, and and mm -hmm. I always felt like there was something that you knew was special about your what you were doing, and and it wasn't because you know um, of real estate or anything like that. It was it was because I, it's not that I didn't see you fully commit to real estate. It's that I saw you fully committed to your detail business. And okay. I knew that, that that was your shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I, I knew that's, that's what it was, but I also mm -hmm. knew that, you know, it's, it's not a rabbit race, you know, and, 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 and friends, right. Friends mm -hmm. yep. can, can, can be in each other's lives for a lifetime. So, so really, you know, it, we're never gonna stop learning from each other. We're always gonna gonna pick something up, tidbits. Definitely. You know, and 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 who knows? Like, because we're both entrepreneurs, the life of an entrepreneur, no matter what the specialty is, mm -hmm. it, it, it it it's the same shit. You know, it's, it's, you, it's all you, it's all in the same it's all in the you, same realm. Yeah, you thrive off of lead generation and referrals. You know, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? <laughs> nah, most de most definitely, most definitely, and and I. So, with everything you got going on, um, I know you got kids yourself. I got I got kids. So, what what do you feel nowadays, knowing what you know, going through what you're going through, past, present, and you having uh you know a, a clear vision or you know a, an idea, a perspective of where you want to be five to ten years from now. What do you feel your purpose is at, 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 in this moment in life at, at your age? Um, you know, like, so I'll be, I'll be 40 in a few months, man. And I feel like at this point in my life, it's, it's about, uh, you know, continuing to build legacy. Um, you know, <laughs> continuing, continuing yep. to build something that, that is generational um, you know, continuing to, to watch my kids grow and educate them and, and, and just focus, you know, uh, I, I really don't feel like, like I'm always busy and I'm always working, but I really don't feel busy or that I'm working because I do, I do a lot of my work now, basically all of my own terms. Like, and when you do, 
when you do it on your own terms, man, <laughs> I, I could be doing, like, I could, I could literally, from now until the day that I die, could do what I'm doing and be happy with it. And that but, in itself is a win, is a win, is a win, is a win. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool, man. I'm content with that because because the you know the the vehicle is real estate. You know, the journey is life, mm -hmm. and I can jump on and jump off that vehicle whenever I want. You mm -hmm. know, if I, if I want to take off for a month mm -hmm. and go go fuck off and I'm by the beach or something, mm -hmm. I can't. Yeah. I won't. <laughs> Because yeah. because my and my energy level doesn't allow me to man like I would get yeah. bored okay. being on vacation you like mm -hmm. like okay for instance and this is this is something that I'm sure other people can feel you ever been to Las Vegas uh, Las Vegas nah that's one thing honestly okay. on some real shit I need to go I need to go do already all right look well I'll tell you I've been to Vegas a number of times before I used to go mm -hmm. as a kid and and you know as I got older I I went with different friends well uh mm -hmm. the last trip that i took to vegas i i must have been about about 35 at the time and mm -hmm. and uh you know it was a company trip we all we would all get together and go somewhere for a few days or whatever as a company and and uh, we went to las vegas it, it was dope man the first day i was there and the lights and the shows and the party and everything it was crazy bro it was mm -hmm. it was it was hype it was hype I bet, sure. man. I you bet. know but but by by day four I was like fuck dude I can't fucking wait to get home and oh. go fucking start hustling again like four days dude I'm like this is ridiculous you know I'll party I like who wants to live like this <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who does this shit <laughs> I'm ready to go dog like I'm just yeah, I'm ready man. to get back on on it man and start fucking working again yeah. and and that's just you know how I am and and the other cool thing about Again, you know, about just this particular, it's not just real estate, man. It's that I, I, I engineered my life mm -hmm. to, like, you know, be able to fucking, like, I, dude, I was working at home before, mm -hmm. like, pre, pre, pre pandemic. Like, I was working mm -hmm. at home way before the pandemic. You know yeah, what I mean? Yep, I, be, I, I became a professional work at homer, right? And, and, and the, the, the cool thing about that is, it doesn't necessarily mean just be at the house. Mm -hmm. Like and not can, doing shit. Right. Like, right. Like I can be anywhere. Like I can mm -hmm. be at, at my dad's. I can be at the beach. I can be at my grandma's. I can be what? at mm -hmm. wherever. Your kids. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I can be, and you know, as long as I got the phone, you know, and I got some internet connections. I'm, I, mm. I'm in tune. Now, does that interfere with the day to day life? It can, man. You got to have that work life balance and shit. You know, mm -hmm. it's super important. You ever, you ever seen that show Entourage with Ari Gold and and, yeah. and uh, All right. Well, you know, like Ari Gold was his agent for the character mm -hmm. that played Marky Mark. Um, but anyways, <laughs> he would always, always be on the damn phone and him and his wife would get into it about it and he's like baby baby but it's just yeah. an important point. That, that, that's the yeah, extent of what goes on right you know and it yeah. it could be worse you know like there's people that are still working in factories dude mm -hmm. and, and again nothing against factories. yeah of course yeah between, between me and you that is a fucking hard-ass fucking job and, you know i have family that works in in factories I'm just saying because of our conversation, when I was mm -hmm. a kid, I realized how bad I fucking hated working in factories, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 and the, on the flip side of the coin, some people aren't people, people, they can't talk to people, they can't socialize, they can't, they can't interact, you know what I mean? So for them, factory work is fucking easy. It's a boom, just, it's, it's a breeze, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not one of those people. <laughs> uh, yeah i i discovered that shit real real fast i've always told people i've always told people if man if, if i barely wanted to work for my pops what the fuck makes you think i'm gonna want to work for someone else yeah you know what i mean and that's yeah. uh, that's just the truth but again you know um this is basically what the state of my university and what what i what i'm going to build off of this is same thing as bringing an individual like yourself, sharing your story, sharing your knowledge, blessing us with your time. So 
because because I feel at this moment in, in time in, in my life, I want to lead by example and create more leaders, create more entrepreneurs, create more, you know, uh, uh, to, to, to be your own boss. I don't want to have employees. I don't want to be a boss and just have a bunch of employees. Right. If I do have if I do have employees, I want my employees to have their own thing going on on the side as well. Of course, right. not, not, not that's going to interfere what we have going on as a whole, as a unit, as a brand, as a business, product, service, whatever it is that we're doing. But I want people to always, uh, you know, as well, tapping into their talents, their skills, their their dreams, their passions, and 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 move forward. I just I just want them to realize that they're to see how far their efforts will will take them. You know, right? There's a <clears throat> excuse me. There's a a book. It, it's a Think Your Way to Wealth by Napoleon Hill, mm-hmm. and. Uh, you know, for all of you out there that don't listen to that book, that that, that is a very that's that's a very good read, and, and of course the uh, the classic, the Think and Grow Rich, by Napoleon right. Hill as well. Right, exactly. Those are those are uh, big influences. You know, I I I read them about five or six times, and mm-hmm. um, there's a story that uh, that they talk about, and uh, it, it's just this story. It's always stuck with me. But it's about the farm. It's the farm story, and and uh, you know, like I feel like the farmer is is one of the original entrepreneurs, if not the original entrepreneur, right? I don't mm-hmm. know, man. There's there's other things that are probably before that, but I take I yeah. take farming, um, and and here's here's what I gathered. You know, there is a there is a a recruiter that came to talk to us one time some years back and he was talking about uh, people being self-employed and and he was like you know that a hundred years ago ninety uh, percent of America was self-employed and only ten percent worked for companies he's like but if you fast forward a hundred years ninety percent work for companies and only ten percent are self-employed entrepreneurs right and I mean I don't know how exact that Figure yeah, it. how accurate it, it is, but that's it, amazing. It stands this, this, to make some fucking sense, you know. This, and mm-hmm. and 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 so the, the here's the story of 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 that is, is because a hundred years ago, ninety percent of the people were farmers. Ninety mm-hmm. percent of the people it was agriculture. That was that was what people did to make money, and mm-hmm. and you know it. The reason I bring this up is because it makes sense that nature works in an abundance so here's what i mean a farmer has to get land and then they have to prepare that land through tilling it you know etc etc fertilizing it eventually they'll plant seeds in that land and those seeds will eventually if they do their job right and Mm -hmm. they nurture Nurture it Mm -hmm. and they take care of them those those plants will flourish mm-hmm. and they will produce a harvest mm-hmm. and once once the farmer has done everything that he needs to do he can then take that product produce, that produce yep. and and he can bring it to market and distribute and and he can distribute it for a profit which mm-hmm. then allows him to go back feed his family take care of everything he needs to do reinvest in his farm and start the process all over again for the next season, you know. Yep. Now that's that's the, fire as fuck, man. <laughs> the, reason, the reason it's important to know that is because that is the way of nature. You mm-hmm. see, it's it's unnatural, and this is why entrepreneurs are crazy because we think like this. But it's unnatural for somebody to, you know, want to work for somebody else. It's mm-hmm. it's it's a uh, it. It, it's indoctrinated into us as a society through, you know, all the way from pre-kinder through, through college because, mm-hmm. they, you know, they, 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 they train you to, to be employees at, mm-hmm. at institutions. Nothing wrong with having degrees and all that shit, but I, yeah. I digress. But the point is, is, that, is that these farmers, they went the way of nature. And because they went the way of nature, they, they were rewarded. Like, they're, 
they they had such an abundance whatever whatever the product was whatever whatever it was potatoes or carrots or whatever it was it was brought in such an abundance because they they didn't get paid to till the land they didn't get paid to plant the seeds they didn't get paid to harvest they didn't get mm -hmm. paid until they brought the product to market and the market decided how valuable they were and they yes, paid them sir. but everything that they did before that was was they didn't they didn't make an hourly wage to do that shit mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like everything that they did that be, that they did before that was the blood sweat and tears of the business of the exactly. farmer of, of him mm -hmm. and his family going out there and farming those crops and, day in and, and day out market you know and then what do they do they get with other farmers right so this farmer this is this is the original system bartering right so this mm -hmm. farmer has as as cows and and pigs which produces bacon and eggs you mm -hmm. know and milk right well now they've got all of those products plus cheese plus you know all of these other things mm -hmm. uh this other farmer does pickles you know he has cucumbers this other farmer mm -hmm. does tomatoes etc etc mm -hmm. and they all they boom now they have a farmer's market everybody's out there you know buying selling trading that's entrepreneurship right there it's, mm -hmm. it's the farmer and and all all of that did is expand when we we became an industrialized nation and technology took over and now you can be famous just by talking on the camera like this <laughs> so what the fuck we do, doing what the fuck we doing <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh but that's that is that's so fucking true but man and and people pete that's that's some fucking game right there like the the mindset and and having a, pers a perspective of thinking of how things work in that matter then the whole process, it, shit is not going to happen to you overnight. You know, it, 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 anything with value is going to take patience and consistency. And I, and I fucking preach this shit. I try to teach this shit time and time again. Patience and consistency, it has, has driven me to where I am today. And, and I use this shit every, every single day, day in and day out. What do you agree Patience and consistency is 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 some of the main keys. I have a do. problem with patience. <laughs> well, so, and I really this, do. Is, this this is the thing: have patience, but have some sense of urgency, because tomorrow ain't promised. So, right. so have some sense of urgency and try to get. Because look what we're doing. What fuck? What time is it right now? It's fucking eleven twenty three at night. I I worked all day. You. I, I I was with my kids. I put them to bed. I'm sure you 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 worked all day. You're with your family. And was, what do we do? We're we're, <laughs> we're up. You know we're we're up doing doing this the the extra stuff. You know this this is what it takes. Not making excuses, making the time, and we're putting out content with with you know some trying to provide value. You know. Right. That's what. So, but I agree with you. It's not just about being patient, but also operating with, with some sense of urgency throughout your day. I think I think consistency is the key, man. No matter what you do, you have to and and you have to consistently be able to adapt. You have to consistently mm -hmm. be able to, uh, you know, be a chameleon. You have to consistently be a hustler. You have to consistently be a problem solver. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to consistently be a light. Mm -hmm. You know, that a good brother, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, a good a good steward of the Lord. Yeah, I mean, like there's 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 so many hats, right, that we wear. Mm -hmm. But but one thing is, I, 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 go ahead, go ahead. The one thing, go ahead. No, the one thing is, is that you know, being being problem solvers. Mm -hmm. When you become a problem solver, people are attracted to that mm -hmm. because because they they feel like they can bring you problems and you can solve them because yep. they see they see you process information and they see how you work mm -hmm. and that is the, the the one of the components of being a good leader mm -hmm. you know is is being able not not to solve people's problems for them but to show them by example how to be a problem solver mm -hmm. right you know mm -hmm. sometimes it just takes a conversation with somebody man you never know you never know what kind of impact you're going to make on somebody's life you never know what somebody needed to hear mm -hmm. at that exact moment but sometimes when you're doing things right and it's pure you reach out and you touch somebody's heart and when you touch somebody's heart and you make that impact on them they they then turn around 
and will spread that or they'll tell or they'll impact somebody's life and they'll touch their heart you know and then you have this reciprocal uh, uh, uh oh man flow. we we about to get shut down i think we got 22 seconds oh shit i didn't know that this yeah was the time, uh, the time yeah later. yeah me neither i just figured it out man howdy but, uh, it's always a pleasure man i appreciate thanks. you god bless you i appreciate your time and we, i hope got, you got something out of it i know i did me too man we'll, we'll do this again a part two okay man